up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are starting a new build series. Now this is not the build series that I had planned for this particular time but it's the build series we're gonna get. <laughs> so I had started a billet that ended up not working out and I'll get into that more whenever we actually start that series because I am gonna continue to work on that particular setup and then whenever we go into it You'll get to see why and understand why I went the route that I went today. <laughs> so, uh, more or less, I was out in the forge, forging for a few hours. That didn't end up working out. And sometimes you can easily go, screw this, I'm done for the day. Shut the forge down, go inside, and just be you know in a bad mood for the rest of the day. And I thought, screw that, I'm not doing that. I already got the forge lit. Yeah, that thing didn't work out. But I'm going to knock out something, and I'm going to actually get somewhere with something. And that's what I did. So I took a piece of 5160, the same 5160 that I used to make the Wakazashi build. And this was a piece of steel that I had practiced doing handle profiles. Like, whenever I first started forging, and I got that 5160, this was probably the second thing that ever even touched my anvil. <laughs> so... I had taken this piece of steel, which was the end of the leaf spring where it kind of loops back on itself and the bolts go through it. I took that piece and I had flattened it out a while back and kind of, you know, beat on it a little bit. The hammer strikes going everywhere, uh, trying to forge in a little handle profile. And it looked ugly. It looked horrible. So I took that piece of steel and I put it back here. And I've been using it as like a push stick for different things for the longest time. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to take that piece of steel, I'm going to forge something out of it, and, you know, go from there. And that is how this particular profile came into existence. Now, I did not have a drawn profile for this. This was purely just what looked good as I was swinging a hammer at it. And that's the profile we got. And... I'm really happy about it. I really think that this is going to turn into a really cool knife, but I'm going to end up getting into the forging process and we're going to do a voiceover for all that so you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing when I'm doing it. But I'm really happy about this. I'm happy that I pushed myself to just say, you know what, screw it, push past it, make something cool. So that's what we did. Guys, let's jump into the forge, show you how I got this knocked out, and then we'll come in here, we'll grind out the profile just a little bit, refine it just a hair. Go from there. Let's get it. Like I was saying before, this piece of steel was a, a scrap piece that I had forged on a long time ago just to see if I could even do it. So there really wasn't anything set up on here except for a random handle forging that really looked awful. <laughs> but I figured I would start this process by going ahead and just forging the tip into place so that I had kind of an idea of what direction I wanted to go with this particular build. I decided to do a little bit of a drop point and at this point I didn't know that I was going to end up going the direction of the little harpoon blade style or you know what the ones with the swedge on the top of them. I didn't know that I was going to go that route at this point, but I knew that I wanted it to be some sort of a drop point, a little EDC style blade. So that's the direction that I went at this point. And a lot of this was moving still into the profile and then flattening it out so that I could correct some of the hammer blows from the original time that I'd forged on this. So moving the steel the way that I did kind of swelled it back out so that I could then flatten it and it helped me correct some of those horrible hammer blows. But right now we want to get into that finger choil area and start getting the blade separated from the tang area and we can kind of decide what I want to do with it from that point moving forward now that I know the size of the blade. And what I decided there was, okay, now it's time to go ahead and forge in that, that harpoon style swedge area, get it kind of designated for where I wanted that to be. 
And once we got that situated, I could then start focusing on the tang of the knife. So now all that is where I want it to be. We can start getting the, the tang kind of profile to where we want it. And the big thing about this, with it not having a pre-drawn out profile to kind of go off of, it was purely me gauging it by eye to where I thought that the profile needed to be to fit my hand. This was a big gamble because it's really good to have measurements going into something like this, but purely off of me just kind of guesstimating where I wanted things to be, it did end up working out in the end. I don't suggest that you do it like that. Having an idea of where you want things to go in the beginning is a good plan. Get the arc that I want on the actual tang going into the blade so that we get that nice ergonomic feel. And we just use a little <laughs> piece of steel to help us with that. Wasn't anything super fancy. And then we're using the ball peen hammer to give it that texture that I like on the flats and Mercaso area. And then once we decided how long I wanted the handle, I went ahead and hot cut the end of that tang off because we didn't need that there. And I wanted to eliminate these pieces of steel because I didn't want to use the porter band saw for any of this. I wanted to get everything where it needed to be and then barely have to grind anything on the 2x72. So right now we're just going to be refining that tang a little bit, getting everything to where it needs to be, kind of getting those, those choil areas or swells uh, in the right location so that it fits your hand correctly. And then once we got all that set up, we're going to use my little flattening hammer. This is an auto body hammer that I've had for about 23, 24 years, back whenever I was doing auto body. And I absolutely love this hammer. This will take almost any hammer blow out of steel and make it perfectly flat. And by the time I was all said and done with this, this tang was ready to receive scales. It's that flat. I'm not gonna need to grind on it at all. It is perfectly smooth. And it's nice and light enough when I start to straighten the blade. It doesn't actually remove those ball peen hammer blows that I did. So I can kind of finesse it just a little bit to get everything to where I want it to be without it being too aggressive and forging those, those textures out of there if you don't want it to. Love this hammer. You should get one if you don't have one. Now at this point, you can see that we barely need to remove anything on the 2x72. I think the biggest area that I removed was still under an eighth of an inch. Most of these are about a sixteenth of an inch that I had to grind off. Because I didn't grind all of that marker off that you see right here. It was just a little bit to give me an idea of where I wanted to refine it. But everything else was just smoothing out the areas where I had hit it with a hammer on the spine and belly of the tang and the spine of the blade just to kind of refine them and make them look nice and smooth. Like I said before, I didn't want to spend a ton of time on the grinder, so I spent about 45 minutes during the forging process and then only about maybe eight minutes on the 2x72, getting the profile where it needed to be, which was absolutely awesome.
Now that we got our profile nice and refined, feels good in the hand. Got our edge all nice and done up. So what I typically do off camera is I go through and just hit it with the oscillating spindle sander and get into all the little nooks and crannies and then I go vertical on the platen with a 220 grit belt for like some of these areas like this and this and then some of this and the rest of it's all with the spindle sander. It gives me a nice little clean finish all around the edge so that whenever I want to scribe my lines eventually I can and have a nice clean edge to scribe those on to figure out where I want my bevels and all that. But right now what I need to figure out is where I'm going to be drilling my pinholes for the tang area and all that. So where the handle is going to end up being, where do I want it, and then once we do that, where do I want the pins. And I'm thinking that I kind of want to mimic the back area a little bit. So we'll just come up through here. Sweep up just a little bit to kind of mimic that. That should be perfectly fine for where my hand's going to end up landing. And then we just need to figure out where I want to put the pins. On a handle like this, I'll probably just go ahead and put two pins. And I don't think I'm going to do a lanyard hole on this one. I think I'm just going to do pins. Call it good. Perfect. Little bit. Right there. And that is where our pins are going to go. You might be thinking to yourself, well, Eric, that's not the most pre precise thing in the world. But it actually is. I'm just comfortable with using my eye to do this. Perfect. I'm good with that. And that. Right there, right there. <laughs> so that's where we're gonna end up putting our pins. You might be asking yourself, well, are you gonna put a pin through here? I might end up doing a hidden pin where I end up drilling through and then drilling into the back of the scales and letting the epoxy cross over from one side of the scales to the other without having to do an actual pin. And then I'll just do some micarta pins Call it good. So now we need to go ahead, punch these, drill them, and get that part at least out of the way, and go from there. You're gonna see on this section that drilling pinholes is not always sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes they don't wanna go through as easy as everyone on YouTube seems to make them look like they can go through. This is a new drill bit, but it doesn't matter whenever you're using 5160, and 5160 has the ability to air cool a little bit and harden itself. So even though I annealed this, it was still a little hard in the center of the blade. The outsides were pretty soft, but trying to get through that center layer of it was, was a little rough. But it's all about using your oil, make sure you're not, you know, just forcing it down through there. I'm barely putting any pressure on this as I'm going through because I want the drill to do its job without me burning it up and having to re-grind it. But you'll see here, it starts sticking and I start thinking, oh crap, I'm going to have to anneal this some more. But 
it works out for the most part. Almost seemed like it wasn't going to go through there for a little bit there, but, you know, keep your oil on there, and it'll go through most of the time, sometimes. All right guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. Now, when it comes to this particular profile, I'm really happy that I went ahead and just winged it and forged what I thought made sense in my mind. And I, I really, really, really think the profile is really nice. You know, typically, whenever I go to make a knife, I spend time, I draw out the profile, I kind of get measurements and things like that to make sure it's gonna fit my hand and all those different things. But on this one, I didn't do that. Just took the piece of steel and I just started forging. And this is what ended up happening. And I really, really, really like this profile. So it's gonna be cool seeing the evolution of it through the Shop Talk Tuesday build series and all that. We're gonna have three videos in this one. So next week we're gonna do the bevels, the heat treat, and then probably the finish on the actual blade, get that part done. And then the video after that, we're gonna do <laughs> handle scales, attaching, shaping, all that stuff, and put an edge on it and call that part done. So it's just going to be three episodes. should be nice and simple. And then we'll go into the one that I had already planned on doing for this particular series because that'll give me enough time to do the research that I need to do to really nail down that raw iron process. So that's what we're going to have going on. Now, guys, this particular knife is a example of pushing yourself past the deflating failure moments you know what I mean you know of course they're never really failures they're all learning experiences but there are times whenever you spend that two three four hours forging something and then it just doesn't work and it could be really deflating so sometimes you just got to push past that and just go you know what that didn't work but I know I can do this so I'm gonna knock that out and that's what I did with this particular one. And I was able to achieve this particular knife and this unique profile based on that process. So sometimes it's nice just to push yourself past that. Now, one of the things that I wanted to hit on in this particular episode is, if y'all didn't know this, myself and four of the dudes came up with a podcast. It's called the Knives Templar Podcast. And they're all guys that are just like me that have these same moments that I do. And we talk about a bunch of stuff. It's just a bunch of down to earth guys talking about things that happen in your life, plus knife making and cool knife making tips and tricks and stuff like that. So go give that a listen. I'm going to leave a link for the last episode in the description down below. And then I'm also going to do a little, uh, a little plug for myself. You know, I don't have all the sponsors. I don't have all the Patreon stuff or anything like that. 
One of the ways that I'm able to keep doing everything that I do in this shop is because of my website, theriversexperience.com, that I launched January 1st. If you would, go on there, check out some of the stuff that I have on there. I've got pendants, I've got shirts. This is one of the new designs with just the chill logo here and then on the back. It's a, a thinner logo so that you don't build up a bunch of heat in between your body and that logo. Plus, all the shirts are made for actual people. They're not those super skinny shirts. They actually fit comfortably and fit your chest and all that stuff. So go over there, check out some of that stuff, and scoop something up because that definitely helps me to maintain what I'm doing here and push forward within the shop and the shop expansion and stuff like that. So guys, go check it out. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description below. Guys, also, give the video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.